right, boys and girls, we have completed our anchor chart, how to discuss, how to work in partners. So we are going to read those shoes and we're gonna practice those skills. Just based on the first page, the front cover right here, I want you to think about what do you notice about this young boy here and what do you notice about these boys? Now you can take a couple notes to the side or you can just think about it. And remember, pause as you need. Okay. So this is one of my favorite books, Those Shoes. I have dreams about those shoes. Black high tops, two white stripes. So here's that boy right here. I'm just looking at this big banner up here. Grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here, just need. Grandma says, and what you need are new boots for winter. All right, real quick, I want you to talk to maybe someone at home, a family member, or maybe make a note. Um, what do you think grandma meant when it says there's no room for want around here, just need? So when we're discussing at home, you, there should be someone there that you can turn and kind of talk to about this or make notes and kind of talk to them about it later. Brandon T. comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest before those shoes came along. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom. Seven times in one day, just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. Next, Alan, Jacoby, and Terrence each get a pair. So think about how do you think he is feeling right now? I mean, you can even look at the picture and kind of make a good inference. Then one day, in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfrey, the guidance counselor says. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only shoes that are my size, Velcro. Like the ones my little cousin Marshall wears. They have an animal on them from a cartoon I don't think any kid ever watched. So our character right here, his name is Jeremy. And so he's getting a pair of shoes because it's something that he needs. Real quick, let's stop and turn to our partner, turn to someone at home or make a note of how do you think he feels about these Velcro shoes with an animal on them that he thinks no one has ever watched. Remember, you can pause. When I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes and laughs. And so do Terrence, Brandon T, and everyone else. The only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. I nod and turn my back. I'm not going to cry about my dumb shoes. But when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes. And my grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might bust. So when he says, my grip is so tight, I think it might bust, I don't think he's very happy. To me, it kind of shows that he's very upset. On Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I got a little bit of money set aside. Might be enough, you never know. You can look at Jeremy's face. You can tell he's getting kind of excited about those shoes. At the shoe store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. 
Grandma shakes her head. Okay, let's turn to someone at home or let's make a note. What do you think she means by she sits down heavy? Think about the price. She looks at the price and then she sits down heavy. Let's lose, use our clues as well. We look at her face. Jeremy's kind of putting his hand on her shoulder. She sits down heavy. She, there's something wrong. She might be upset. Then I remember the thrift shops. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs of her Christmas and had to give one of them away? We ride the bus to the first thrift shop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoes except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner is the third thrift shop. I see something in the window. So they're having to shop at thrift shops. Um, let's see if we can make an inference about that. Remember, a thrift shop is a store that you take things that maybe you no longer want or you outgrow, and then you can actually get them for a cheaper price. I love thrift shops. I shop there all the time for my boys. Black shoes with two white stripes, high tops, perfect shape, $2.50. Those shoes. My heart is pounding hard as I take off my shoes and hitch up my baggy socks. How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot into the first shoe, curling my toes to get my heel in. I don't know, but I think they fit. Do you think if you have to curl your toes that they're going to fit? Why don't you take a second to think about that? Remember, if you're talking with someone at home, maybe turn to them and kind of share. Remember, soft voices, you're looking at them. Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for my toes at the end of the shoe. Oh, Jeremy, she says, I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the other shoe on and try to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes will fall off right then and there. He must be hurting. But my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyway with my own money, and I squeeze them on and limp to the bus stop. He really wants to have shoes like everybody else if he's going to be limping. At home a few days later, Grandma puts a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I say. Grandma gives me a hug. Look at these feet right here with the band-aids. Do you really think that they're going to stretch enough to fit? I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Alfreys to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up, and his feet look smaller than mine. Hmm. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio is there the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoes smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think I'm not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not going to do it. We race from one of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it. I say, do what, Antonio says, breathing hard. What do you think Jeremy is so upset about that he's not going to do? Grandma calls me for supper and it invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear them, Antonio asks. I shrug. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. 
Look at his face right here. Antonio's so excited to see those shoes. That night, I am awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. Why do you think he says one last time? What do you think he's going to do? Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door, push the doorbell, and run. So what did Jeremy do with his shoes? Turn to someone at home and kind of share what Jeremy just did and also share kind of why you think he did that. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at my Mr. Alfrey's shoes. But later, when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere there is snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall? It's then I remember what I have in my backpack. New boots. New black boots that no kid has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, thanks. I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race. So, I would like you to turn to someone at home or make a note and you can share with your teacher online. Um, just make a note of why do you think Jeremy gave, the show, gave those shoes to, to Antonio? Why was it so important for him to give it to him?